Zadon Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. Before we actually begin the actual theory, I would like to say that uh, if you are going to leave your theories for the fan theory review, just know that I, as of recording, well, as of the time that you guys actually see this, I will have already selected the ones for the fan theory review, so still put them in because they could show up next time. Uh, but yeah, so the hashtag will be in this video as well as the fan theory review video if no one has actually submitted any theories between the two times. Uh, but yes, use the hashtag and uh, leave your theories down in the comments below because maybe it might even get its own video. But anyways guys, let's get into the theory on who could be the traitor in My Hero Academia. Now, the whole traitor situation is kind of a weird thing. We all assume, oh, there has to be a traitor, because why mention it if there isn't going to be one? Now, honestly, I would actually be fine if there isn't actually a traitor, because honestly, it kind of feels weird that they would introduce a traitor. It's just, I don't know. It's odd. It's very likely that... All for one just happened to have some quirk that lets him know what's going on or something or they snuck a bug into the school it's either one is a high possibility and honestly it's kind of ridiculous to still be thinking there might be a traitor the two things that we all think of immediately when we think of the traitor is the USJ and of course the camp. Now, the simple fact of the matter is that we have to first assume that whoever was the traitor for the USJ also was the traitor for the camp. Simply because there's no real reason for there not to be. Now, the fact of the matter is that there is a lot going on in the manga right now. And depending on how far we actually get into it, if there is a traitor, I would expect it to be happening in the stuff that's currently going on over in Japan um, for whoever it is to be revealed at that point. Um, they're in a different arc from what we are in, so yeah. Um, but if there is actually going to be a traitor, that's where we're going to find out about it first. But yeah. So who could be the traitor then? Well, first off, we have to state the obvious one it can only be a, it has to either be a teacher or a student um there is a possibility that it could be someone else like maybe toga but the thing is that she wasn't introduced until much later so the fact that she could even be thought of as the uh mole by jumping into the situation kind of doesn't make sense um so yeah now, another thing to note is that only teachers, again, kind of, knew about the whole uh, Class 1A is going off to the USJ and Class 1A and B were going off to, well, see what's going on, um, or go to the camp. And the only teachers, at least as far as we are aware, who knew about the camp was Nezu, obviously, uh, Aizawa and Vlad King, the as well as a few other people such as the Wild Wild Pussycats, but they're kind of a weird situation. So I'm gonna say right now it's unlikely. But Vlad King is kind of a weird situation. He is currently the only hero that we know of that could be kind of odd. The fact of the matter is that he would know about the whole USJ thing. He would know about them going off to the camp. Now, obviously, he would probably be a little bit more wary of the camp. But honestly, if you really think about it, it makes sense if he were the villain that was or the traitor. He could easily tell people. Uh, tell the villains these things because he wants his class to become the top class. No one really thinks about class 1B. 
they all think about class 1A. And occasionally you'll get someone interesting from one of the other classes, but class A is always the big one. But for some reason, this year, class B is actually the one that's kind of getting more attention than it usually does. Usually it they get a decent amount of attention, but more this time. But why is that? Maybe it's because of, of the fact that they are actually getting more training than Class 1A ever has. I mean, think about it. Every time that the villains attack, the kids have to fight for their lives. As such, they don't get to have the actual training that they were supposed to have. I mean, honestly, they, as far as we're aware, they never actually got to train at the USJ. Um, now, there is a high likelihood that they actually did later down the line. In fact, if you believe that the school briefs are canon, then you know they did. But in the actual anime and the manga, never ever shown that they actually went to the USJ to train, except for um, their actual test. And that's it. Nothing else has ever been like that since then. Meanwhile, Class B is likely getting all of their training done because of the fact that Class 1A is kind of falling behind because of all of their villain interactions. So, Vlad, being the traitor, actually makes a decent amount of sense. I mean, even if you look at it kind of more cynically, you may realize that in... During the training camp, Class B was actually hurt a lot less than Class A. And it's odd to think about. It's like they were told, hey, try to avoid attacking Class B. Kind of odd. Definitely seems like something odd for Class B to be actually getting a decent amount of time in the spotlight. I mean, Tetsu Tetsu and Kendu, uh, Kenda, uh, K Kendo um, got a huge amount of time. They took down Mustard by themselves. None of the other classmates helped them with it. And Momo and that one guy were working together for this one, uh, for uh, the one thing, uh, to track the guy. And yeah, that's pretty insane to think about. But then there's a few other things that are rather important to think about. And that is that there's actually a decent possibility that there is a student who could be doing this. Obviously, Vlad has his reasons. He wants Class B to get more attention than they usually do. I mean, one just needs to look at the current arc or what's going to be the current arc in the anime next season. Literally, the next season of the arc of the anime is actually going to be dealing with the fact that Vlad is kind of a, a really focused on Class B getting more attention. It's kind of odd. So all that happens, and then what? But I think we should actually look somewhere else as well. Class 1A, specifically. Now, almost everyone in Class A actually gets a lot of attention, especially considering the cast size. Like, if you really think about it, the main character cast size is pretty big, and the only anime that I can actually think of offhand that has that big of a cast, that's not like a side series or whatever, is, well assassination classroom and if you think about that there are maybe like four characters that you'll maybe five characters that you'll remember offhand for that while in class uh, in class 1a you'll probably remember most of them maybe leaving up to seven because of the, the fact that there's like seven characters who currently haven't gotten any screen time in the um uh in My Hero One's Justice, those guys, maybe, but they've gotten 
each most of them have actually gotten a decent amount of screen time even in the anime but then there's something else Toru Hakakure we all know that she has the power to be invisible meaning that she would be the perfect spy even if she doesn't have a way to communicate with the villains she could easily sneak out, tell the villains what's going on, come back, no one would even know. Even during the um, lockdown, if something blows past her, it's still a good possibility that nothing will actually... The only thing that people will see is like maybe leaves blowing and maybe making her shape, but it's still odd. The only way that anything would happen is if something touched her. And if they have cameras, then that still only then would something actually be thought of. The rest of the thing is camera based, as far as we're aware. So what exactly is going on then? Well, perhaps it's more than meets the eye. Now, the reason I bring up Hagakure is because of the fact that, well, let's go back to the USJ. Again, like I said, it would make sense if Vlad would send the villains there, since that's going to be the only time that they're going to be alone, but there's also something kind of odd. We get to see every single classmate get some chance to shine, even when they get split up. The only person who doesn't at all is Hagakure. But why? Later down the line, after the that little arc has finished, she tells everyone that she was with Todoroki, just off to the sidelines. And it's believable, because she's invisible. We wouldn't see anything. But... Still odd that even if you look through every single frame, you never once see her gloves or boots. And Todoroki is panicked. He thinks that, oh my gosh, I could have frozen her. But he didn't. Kind of odd, to say the least. Why? Maybe she wasn't there. Maybe she was actually sent somewhere else. Somewhere further away. Somewhere to tell the villains everything she has learned since being there. Now, obviously, there's a few things that she doesn't know. Because, plain and simple, the villains don't know. Or do they? Strangely, All for One does say something about Deku. Something that nobody really knows, except for Bakugo and All Might. Even other characters, such as, um, even though Suyu and Todoroki have some sneaking suspicion, they've never actually gotten it confirmed. Meanwhile, we have this invisible girl who could literally be in that moment, right there, as Deku is telling Bakugo this stuff, and no one would know, she could literally just be covering her mouth the entire time, and no one would know how, that she's there. She could be shocked for all we know, but then she goes and tells all for one. And it's interesting, because at that point, there's still... A decent amount of time before anything's actually revealed so kind of odd to say the least so yeah now obviously nobody hears the whole conversation but definitely a decent possibility there now obviously there's a few other moments are kind of hard to place such as like i said the uh going off to the campground no one knows at all except for aizawa nezu and vlad king 
but they have to share the information with each other. Now, obviously, we always see that they only show the file, uh, the file of where they're going, meaning that Hagakure would have to look specifically at that spot to see, oh, yeah, that's, um, that's important. Thank you very much. Now we go tell the villains exactly what's going on. I always thought that it was kind of odd that they came there so fast. Like, literally, they were only there for like three days, I think. So the fact that they were actually able to get there that fast, the villains were able to get there that fast, it's odd. Meaning that somebody had to tell them. Hagakure, I'm not so sure. Like I said, Vlad King and Hagakure might be decent possibilities. And while I would like to see maybe this happen, I'm also kind of wondering if it really should be thought of. I mean, honestly, the two characters are seem like they're decent people. Hagakure is still kind of in the sidelines, but is she evil? Doesn't seem like that. I mean, obviously, Mineta sniffing at her drawer, she gets upset, but I mean, come on, unless there's like something suspicious in there, I don't know what the heck she would have to be. Oh, well, I mean, obviously, drawers. But kind of odd that only Hagakure's. He, we only ever, even though Mineta is a pervert plain and simple, and sees all of the girls' rooms. The only shot we actually see anyone him actually doing that weird hand motion for is Hagakure. I mean, obviously, we assume that he's doing it for all of the others, but she specifically acts like, hey, don't do that, Not you're a pervert, and blah, blah, blah. Now, obviously, he is, but... Maybe there's something else she has to hide. In a place where no one would want to, no one would look because obviously they're decent human beings, except for Mineta. I mean, obviously, Mineta is a pervert, but, and she has reasons to be upset if he was doing that, but still, kind of odd to say the least. I don't know. Something's not quite right at all. Like I said, there's a few other moments sprinkled in here and there that are just kind of odd. Like everyone else just who's not really gotten their time to shine is either just boring or they get some chance to shine, but it's not too much. Meanwhile, Hogakure gets all these strange moments where you just question, what? That's odd. Now, obviously, I do not necessarily want any uh, either of these characters to be evil and be revealed to be the traitor. Honestly, if there's no traitor, I'm perfectly fine with that. I know some people will be upset, but honestly... Considering the fact that the, they only ever mention the traitor once, and people just have gone bizarre because of it, I mean, that's kind of leading me towards thinking, ah, there's not a traitor. They just, there's just like some bug that they planted. I mean, come on. Uh, freaking, they did break in. They did break in at one point. Uh, Shigaraki actually broke in. So if he p placed a bug, I mean, come on, it's not that weird. And the fact of the matter is that that was early. That was really early. Like it was after the um, USJ thing. But honestly, I mean, come on, they're just going to expect it to be something along the lines of, oh, yeah, th they this is actually pretty common for us to go to the USJ. They might have even seen the bus going. It's not that weird. They could literally just give us exposition later down the line to 
basically just tell us how they got there, and it wasn't actually a traitor. Honestly, I would not be shocked if it's not. But, I mean, some people would get upset about it. So, whatever, and also, even if one of them is the traitor, or even somebody else is the traitor, I would not be surprised if eventually they get a redemption arc. But the simple fact of the matter is that he hasn't done any twist villains yet. And now kind of seems weird. I mean, if he keeps intro uh, getting us to feel for these characters more and more, a twist villain just seems odd at this point. I mean, yeah, they could do it, but... Twist villains are hard, and I do mean that literally. It's like, not literally, but I mean that. I've written twist villains before, and I don't like doing them. I mean, if you don't, if you're not careful with at least hinting at who the villain is throughout the entire series, then you're going to end up in a situation like Raising Dion, where it seems like, what the heck? Why is he the villain? Nothing seemed suspicious about him until literally the last episode. And now he's the villain? What the heck? Guys, freaking why? He seemed like a great guy, and now he's the villain? I mean, come on. That's why I don't want... Why I've actually said don't show Raising Dion some love. Because it's a terrible show. At least to rewatch. Um... There's a few other things, but seriously, what the... That's why you have to be careful, and a bad twist villain can actually ruin a show. So, be careful, guys. Honestly, if they make a traitor, cool, whatever. Let's just wait and see. Honestly, if it's not Vlad or Hagakure, and it's actually like somebody who's actually gotten a lot of screen time, then I'm just going to be like, what? You're an idiot. But... We'll see. Um, again, let me know down in the comments below what you think of this theory. I'm still a little bit odd about it. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new and ring that notification bell. And if you want to support the channel even more, then definitely head down to the description and check out my merch store and my book, as well as all of my other links. But anyways, guys, I have been Electro Ninja. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time. But on!